And this part of the presentation is all about Artesia. It's about our product in a little bit more detail, and it's about what we've done for certain customers, giving you some idea of the architectures that they have. Now, Artesia is a software company that produces digital asset management software and implements it with customers. Digital asset management is all we do. We don't do web publishing, we don't do um, relationship management on the web, we do just digital asset management. And we work with partners that add value to certain parts of digital asset management. So in the case of broadcast and video, we may work with some of the video analysis engines, we work with some major encoding tools, and we integrate with some of the desktop tools. Some of our clients include AOL Time Warner, Turner Broadcasting, BBC Technology, and some of the large public broadcasters in the US. As an organisation, we've been around for um, probably about five years. We were spun out of a large uh, publishing company in the US, and um, over the last few years, we've achieved significant awards from the industry. Some of the awards are shown there, but these are yeah, sort of covered already. Now, I'll, I'll quickly go through the next slides because these are just extra company information. Uh, we have a professional services organisation, but we prefer to pass all of the experience and knowledge onto our customers because we believe the customer is the best person to, to perform the implementation of our product, but we have what we call solution architects that help to engineer the solution for you. And many of our customers operate their systems on a 24 by 7 basis, so we provide support to match that. We have a number of significant partnerships with technology vendors which help us with the integration with other business systems that we come across. And some of the big names include people like Sun, EMC, Accenture, Vignette, strategic partners. And we also have specific alliance partners. So, for example, in the video space, we work with a company called Virage that do video analysis. We work with Real on the streaming and delivery. Um, we work with Avid on editing. So now we get to the technically interesting part. The product is built on many different layers which enable it to integrate into the business systems that you have as an organisation. XML is supported intrinsically as part of the product to enable content to be exchanged. And XML is very important to us because it means we can describe a lot of things semantically inside the asset management system and we can link assets together. So what does the product look like? The first layer we have um, what we call the web interface and we believe the web client is particularly important to us because it opens up the use of the system not just within your organisation but to partners that are external to your organisation too. The next layer we call the business logic layer and this is where um, there are approximately 19 different business servers working with teams. So things like a scheduler, things like an import engine, things like a security engine. And finally is the rich media repository. Now predominantly we use Oracle as a database storage engine and the database is used to handle all of the metadata um, and potentially XML that the system handles. And the rich media content is probably sitting on a file system or a video server somewhere. And this architecture enables us to cover storage from things like streaming servers through to broadcast quality servers. Now, I apologise for this slide in advance. It should have had a build on it, but uh, unfortunately something went wrong with the build, so it's, it's all there. Um, but what it's to show is how Teams fits into a video asset management broadcast requirement. So if we start at the top where we have the, uh, the video coming in, this could be a physical assets like a tape being played into the system or it could be a satellite feed. For this particular customer the requirement was to generate a very high bitrate um, MPEG-2 file for broadcast quality. So the video is encoded to something like um, 50 megabits per second digital quality and stored on a video server. At the same time the signal was split and passed to a video logger to generate an MPEG-1 format and that video logger can do any of the video analysis that we want. That includes things like um, keyframes, text capture, perhaps from the soundtrack, maybe even speaker identification in the video. But the primary role of the video analysis engine is for us to get as much metadata as we can from that video asset. And all of the metadata and the additional media that we've generated from the video logger is passed and stored in Teams. With the low resolution video being stored on a streaming server and the reference being held in Teams back to the original broadcast quality asset if we need it. So what does this give us? What is the point of this architecture? What we can now do is using an internet browser 
look at the low resolution version of the video, decide if we want certain parts of the video or edit the video, and pass those rough edits to an editing suite with the original video asset. So no longer do people have to sit at an editing station editing the original footage. They can, they can browse it over the web and do their editing remotely. We've already said that, that Teams or Arteza is um, relevant across lots of different markets. Um, I will probably concentrate on the broadcast um, examples we have here and you've got the other examples if you need to look at them. So these are some of the customers that we've talked about already and these are the sort of sectors that we've, we've working in. So in the broadcast entertainment space you can see there is a number of publishers in there that uh, are using Teams to manage their broadcast assets. But looking at broadcast, why is broadcast good for Artesia? Um, essentially we support all of the streaming formats. You can perform functions like video clipping and create play decision lists or edit decision lists remotely. And uh, we have integration with many different tools such as video logging tools or editing tools that we've already discussed. So looking at one particular customer, BBC Technology. BBC Technology use Artesia's product to streamline the production of video for the new 3G handsets. And this involves integration with playout systems like Quantel and their own internal um, encoding systems. Um, Discovery Networks, very similar requirement, but um, in, inside Discovery, Artesia's product is used to manage all of their content requirements. And this includes their interactive television channels and um, streaming media on their website. Looking at the time, what I'm going to do is jump to the end of the presentation and just pick one other customer reference. The final customer that I'd like to draw your attention to, given the, the audience that we have today and uh, the location we're in, is a customer called thefeedroom.com. Now, thefeedroom.com is a web-based service. And the feed room aggregates news feeds and um, entertainment feeds from lots of different sources and provide a customized portal for their users. Now this is a, uh, this is a public website, so I'd encourage you to take a look um, at thefeedroom.com and to give you some idea of the, the metrics that thefeedroom.com are putting through the system. Um, I've just finished this building, but they're currently streaming 17 terabytes of video through this service per month. And another interesting statistic is that they ingest 200 hours of video every day, so they have parallel video ingestion engines. What you're looking at is, um, I guess this is a relatively old version of our product now. Um, the next version of the product is, is out very shortly and includes a lot of enhanced functionality um, around exporting data. But um, you're looking at the out-of-the-box product. This is a product that has no customization done to it at all. This is what you get when the software arrives. This is one of our interfaces. We have two other types of interfaces. One is customized for the Macintosh, for the creative environment, and another is a Java interface. When I log into the system, uh, there is a huge variety of different security you can use inside Teams. And the example that we're seeing here is the ability to segregate the assets in terms of parts of your organization or perhaps between you and partners so you could provide a number of um, extranet portals if you like to your partners. I log into the system and um, the security determines what functionality I can see and what assets I can see. Um, the welcome page that you see in the system can be one of two things. The first option is um, what we call our category or library system. And the library system is designed to help you find assets by your own terminology. So this, this is, if you like, a library system with terminology that you can define. You can have broader and narrower terms and enable people to find the same assets using different language. And while we're on the subject of language, um, you can also give users preferences so they see the interface in their own language. The system knows from a configuration file what tasks are typically involved in creating a video trailer. So here you see, um, I think there's about eight or nine tasks that all result in the creation of a video trailer and the typical steps that I would expect to go through with different people in my organization to create that video trailer. Alternatively, perhaps I'm the manager of a department and I want to see all of the creative projects that are taking place in my department. So I can select one particular project, drill down in a little bit of detail, look at who's working in that project, look at where the project is at, and we're currently at the edit article stage. See if any of the particular tasks have slipped, as shown in red. Um, I can look at the whole history of the project to see what's happened, and I can define 
who I want to be notified when certain things happen in the project. So perhaps a new piece of media is added, perhaps um, some performing rights information is added, I can define what I want to happen. So going back to the, um, the traditional interface, um, there are a number of facilities available for me as a user in this system. And as I say, this is the, the interface that comes with the product out of the box. So I've got a number of different ways to search. I could search categories that we looked at before. I could search the property model that I'm looking at. Um, and I can save my searches if I want to. And Teams supports multiple metadata models at the same time. So you could have a metadata model for EAD. You could have a metadata model for SMEF or you could have your own customized metadata model that combines the best of both. So I'm going to do a very simple search. And again, um, this search screen is completely customizable. I've decided what fields I want to be able to search on. And I'm going to search for all content that, ref that has a reference to the word discovery in it somewhere. And the results come back in what we call our gallery view. Now, there are many ways of seeing the results to your own uh, customization, but this is just one of the options. And um, to move on from the gallery view, if we select one particular asset, we drill down into what we call the detail view. And the detail view gives us a bit more information about the asset. And again, I've decided that I want to see that particular metadata. If I play this video... Zelo Physis is built for speed. Its limbs are powered by a large muscle that extends from its thigh bone to its tail. Its ankle bones are designed to keep its feet straight while walking or running. A right angle hip joint and an open socket positions its legs under its body, so it stands upright and moves fully erect. Its neck is long and shaped like an S, lifting its head above its body for greater visibility. And here we have what we call keyframes. So this video has been ingested through something like Virage Video Logger. Every time a significant scene change has taken place in the video, we've grabbed a small thumbnail representing part of that video. We've also grabbed the SIMT timecode, so we've got a reference point for the video. And we can create our own clips from this video. So I could say, I want my in point to start here, I want my out point to start here. And if we play that video clip, there is our um, walking or running reduced video clip, which started at a particular point and finished at a particular point as well. Zelophysis is built for speed. A right angle hip joint and an open socket positions its legs under its body. Now this video fragment isn't a new asset. It's still referring to the existing asset, but we're using the SIMT timecode information to create a new reference to that asset. That was looking at the way that we can use video assets in the system to browse and create small clips that we may want to export to a finishing editing station. Okay, so I've gone back to my original search again, and if we look at a different icon, we have a link um, icon here. If I select that link, we can see a number of relationships between this asset and other assets in the system. And I'll select the, um, the, the relationship has script, and then we're presented with a, an icon view of the script that accompanies that video. And here I might decide that I actually want to download the assets through my web browser. Perhaps I want them emailing to me. Perhaps I want them compressing, zipping up and sending to me. Perhaps also when I export those assets, I want to get assets that are related to them. So I can follow the links that we saw before. The relationship between the video has a script. When I export that video, maybe I want to grab the script too. But what I really want to do here is create a web page from those assets. So I select another export process. Now what you'll probably see is a couple of um, boxes flash upon the screen. You wouldn't normally see that because I'm running everything here on my laptop. If you were running a server, those processes would be taking place on a server. So I'll open the new web page we've created. And I'm going to turn the sound off because I've had enough of that now. Okay. So this is the web page that's been created from those assets. The music you can hear is that audio file that was selected as well. And if I click on one of the images, then we're playing the video that I exported to. So what we've done is used Teams as a collection engine for those assets to create a new delivery of media for us. And it could have changed all the formats to web-suitable formats for me at the same time. 
because perhaps we needed to do some re-encoding. So that's one, one example of uh, an output channel. Um, other functionality that we have in the product, um, we've looked at video playlists. Um, there are reports in here too, because perhaps you want to find out who's accessing your media and what they're using it for. Perhaps you want to find out which media they're not accessing that needs to be archived. And the final part I'll show you is that of a much simplified interface. So one of the reasons that we can show you a simplified interface is that the product itself is built on a Java API. And it's very easy to build new interfaces. I'm going to log into the system. Rather than select my organization, the um, system is going to do that for me. And this is a, a much simplified interface for users that just want to be able to search and order assets. So here we have a list down the side of um, searches that have been set up for users. And I've got a predefined search here which should select um, images of Saab assets. So I can take one of those images, I can add it to my basket, um, I can order the basket. We've got much simpler media transformations in there so that people make it easier to understand the system. This time what I'm doing is integrating with a, an e-commerce ordering system which is going to create me a CD-ROM and post it to me. So the information I'm capturing here is additional to um, digital asset data that you might have. And this basically enables you as an organization to keep a much finer track on information that's going out of your company and perhaps to charge for it as well. Implement some pricing mechanisms so you can get additional revenue from assets as they're put onto the CD and shipped to you. So this interface is just one example of how it's very easy in the space of a few days to build a brand new interface into Teams for specific users to do specific functions and make the whole process much more streamlined. And I think I'm probably done in terms of demonstration. It was a very quick demonstration, but I just wanted to pull out some of the, the highlights of Teams and give you a flavor of the capability.